Welcome to the good, the bad, and the sequel with your hosts, Doug and Jamie. All right, we are back again, and this is the movie podcast where we're talking sequels, and we do it in two parts. The first, a discussion of the sequel, what they got right, what they got wrong, and how it could have been better. And the second, an interview with an actor or someone involved that made that film worth watching. I really hope you enjoyed last week's interview with the amazing Tim Lawrence, guy you probably never heard of, but his amazing stories that he had about the, some of the classics that he worked on were, was really enjoyable. If you haven't listened to it, after you listen to this, go check it out. But before we dive into this week's movie, I have to introduce you to my partner in the sequel watching mission, Jamie Riccardi. Jamie, how you doing? I'm doing awesome, Doug. Thanks. I had a great weekend. You? Hey. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. And I had an even greater weekend. You know, I want to jump into right away uh, our movie. And, you know, this, this franchise, I would say, it's probably the best comedic franchise that goes past five movies, six movies. I don't think there's anyone else that does that. Yeah, you know, and you know, it's funny. I watched um, five of them um, <laughs> in the last two days, and um, they hold water. And it's amazing to be able to have a franchise that each one is just as funny as the other one. You know, um, they do hold water. I mean, there are some that are better than others. Yeah. Um, but you know what? They kept the core group together, and it, it worked. Yeah. And if you don't have a guess of the, what the movie is, you know. There, we could have done the second one, we could have done the third one, the fourth, the fifth, but we went the sixth, and there is a seventh, but we won't get into that too much. Uh, it's Police Academy. Uh, really, hands down, the best, like we just mentioned, we alluded to it before, but it's the best franchise. Jamie said it best. Keeping the core group together is so key. You have so many movies that you watch. It's like you watch the first one, the second one has some people, and then the third one, you're like, wait, what the hell just happened? All the people you know, are gone. And not only gone, they'll sometimes change their personality in the movie, but these movies, they stayed exactly the same. Like, you go in there, you know each character, their their quirks, their personalities, they stay the same from movie one to movie seven. They were the yeah. same exact people. Exactly. And uh, it's great that it starts off with uh, Harris and Proctor on a stakeout. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know what? I, I think Proctor, I mean... You know, they did lose two big people, you know, in this movie. Uh, Mahoney's not in it and uh, Bobcat, Zed. Zed's not in it either. Um, but I think Proctor... And Sweet Chuck. And, uh, Sweet Chuck, absolutely. But, but yeah. you know, Zed, Zed and Sweet Chuck together were, were an awesome I know. Uh, but I feel like, you know, after watching this movie, Proctor stepped his game up because I think he was in more scenes than half the other people that were uh, in you know, the other movies. Yeah. And just as the first scene alone, when he started, when he was singing in the car, you know... Uh, oh, and he was singing Christmas songs. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't Christmas. I was thinking when he started singing those songs, and that's how great and like goofy he is. And we'll do some four-hour shadow. I, I know we're not even five minutes in, but next week's interview is amazing. We interviewed uh, Proctor, Lance Kinsey. He is just a great person. And uh, yeah, and he's great in these movies. Him and G.W. Bailey, Harris. Just the fact that they were able to start the movie off together in a scene like that, just their rapport, their back and forth is so great. They make a great comedy theme. And I, and I think G.W. Bailey cracks me up because he, he, you know, he comes across like this hard ass yeah. you know, who, who knows everything. And he might be a bigger idiot than Proctor. Oh, definitely. I, I actually think he brings Proctor down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. He almost to the point, uh, no, he's like, I would say he's kind of in the same realm. You know, I, I know Leslie Nielsen is a legend, how straight he is, but he's so straight. GW yeah. Bailey this whole time, every, everything that happens, you know, whether he gets his ass glued to a chair, you know, no matter what it is, or in, uh, in, in five in police Academy, the one on the beach. Oh dork. yeah. Dork. Dork. Yeah. <laughs> he's so straight and he never breaks. It's like yeah. amazing. Well, you know, it's funny to say naked gun or Leslie Nielsen, because I feel like this movie was a very naked gunish kind of movie. I mean, all the movies that we've watched, I mean, the, the Police Academy movies, they're all, you know, slapstick. They're all silly. This one seemed to go on a different level, and I, it reminded me a lot of the Naked Gun. A lot of the gags were like Naked Gunish. Yeah. Yeah, and then so they're sitting in the car, they're on the stakeout. G.W. Bailey has a hunch that he knows exactly where it's going to happen. Yeah, it happens, you know, directly behind him. The truck drives right past them, and 
It looked like they were stealing, yeah, they were stealing mink coats from like a coat factory. And not only that, Proctor saw them. I know. Saw what was going on. And he tried to, and, and, and Bailey uh, uh, Harris doesn't pay any attention to him <laughs> ever. And I, I, again, I think Proctor always is one step ahead of Bailey or Harris, um, but he never listens to Proctor. I know. And he's waving, and he's waving to them. He's like waving to them. He has no idea what's going on. And yeah, it was hysterical. Sir, sir, <laughs> sir, sir, Proctor, will you listen? <laughs> Hey, I love, I think it's, it's just before when the cops arrive, like after those guys bolt is when Proctor says, uh, he has to, he has to go read the funnies. He always reads the funnies to his niece on Sundays. Yep. Yep. It's a great relationship. He just goes over just to read the comics too. Maybe she's really young or maybe she can't read. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think also, I think, and this movie really brought it out. I mean, he's always been kind of like, you know, simple minded Proctor in every movie, kind of innocent. This one, he's like a five, he's got the mind of like an eight year old, you yeah. know. Um, and you know, he plays with t- toy trains later on, and you know, he's he's almost like he's too honest, like a young kid is always has to tell the truth. So when the cops go there and say, Oh, how long you been here? because they this, you know, Har- uh, you know, Harris is like, Oh, and we just got here, and, and, and before he's able to finish that, Parker's like, No, we've been here for three hours or five hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and then we were introduced to the, the mayor. I don't know if the mayor was in the previous movies, but. That mayor, his quirks, and I, I always love character quirks. Not saying he's not a main character in the movie, but you have these weird characters sometimes, and they have these little, like, quirks. His was, he couldn't remember words, like, vocabulary. He, like, said the definition of the word, and then he went back to it, but... Well, you know, it makes me wonder, who's hiring these people in that city? Because Lassard has an absent-minded mind, also. He can't remember things. And then you have this mayor who can't remember things, and these are the people that are running the city. Who like, do you I, run? Who do you run against? Like Marion Barry, that uh, <laughs> DC mayor that was like smoking crack. No, but then that that mayor with no vocabulary, he brings back Commandant Lassard. I don't. I I feel like Commandant Lassard was in the Miami movie. Um, I'm sure we can fact check. Um, well, that. you know, he might not have been because his nephew is Nick. Yeah, he's yeah. In Miami, and he's now Nick is brought back in the movie, so he might not. He might have been in it like maybe like a phone call to reach yeah. out to his nephew, but he probably wasn't in it that much. Yeah, no, he was so great in that. Yeah, Commandant Lassard. How do you become a Commandant? I've never heard <laughs> no, of that I don't even know what a Commandant is. <laughs> I don't know. Anytime they ever talk about anything in New York City, like cops, you hear like maybe like Lieutenant or Captain, right. but never Commandant. <laughs> maybe that's like an expired – maybe that's what the whole bit is. So now we go into my favorite part of these movies, and that's what makes the formula of these movies so great. They're introducing each and every of those people, you know, Callahan. So Callahan – they introduce her. She's working out like a badass. And all those guys, I feel, I'm guessing that's like a police gym. It, it, that's what it looked like. But, I mean, first of all, the outfits of all these guys working <laughs> out, the shortest shorts possible, like, I mean, like, ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. And then the one guy spotting the other guy who's not even paying attention because Callahan's on the thigh master or whatever she was on. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I love the fact that she's, like, uh, using, like, little barbells. And she throws it, and it didn't even look like there was anything on it. It was probably like a 15-pound weight, and the guy falls on the ground. I really hope that guy's not a cop. And I love, in that scene, one of the guys I freeze-framed that I can't believe I was right, it's the DEA brother-in-law from Breaking Bad, which is, like, so random. He, he was in there? Yeah, he was, he was the one, if for anyone listening goes back, he's wearing, like, the yellow shirts, and he's, like, looking at her. And it's, like, one of his first movies. He's, his role is, like, man at gym. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't so even know she that. was awesome. And then we're, in, we're continuing the introductions. We have Jones. Oh, you know what? I think he stepped his game up this uh, this this, oh, this yeah. I mean, Ridiculous. You know, where did where, where they meet him? Where, no, he was at like a museum or something. Oh, he was the – okay, right. And, and, <laughs> yeah. Well, they brought the old lady from uh, Citizen Time Patrol. That was yeah. the old lady from Citizen – yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's right. He's working in a museum. Yeah, the guy's thinking like his pants are squeaking. And then, <laughs> dude – Honestly, these people were in other movies. Obviously, Jones has had a small role in Spaceballs, and then he did like a good stand-up tour. Like he's a funny guy. Like, but well, we're not there yet. But when he did Jimi Hendrix, oh, I know that, that was amazing. That, that was, was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so then the next introduction we have Hooks, who I don't know if she was ever in another movie, but she was perfect for these movies. Yeah. It was, dude, the way she this these men, you know are trying to talk down to her just because she's a woman cop. But no, she's not having it. 
and she writes them all the tickets, and then she gets his car towed. And gives them about 15 other tickets on top of that. Yeah, so and then she says, one. boy. <laughs> and, then, and then you got Tackleberry. Dude, <laughs> Tackleberry and his son. I really wish his son had a real gun. <laughs> so I'm sure he gives them – I'm sure he's showing these kids how to shoot at, like, an even younger age than he is. No, you know, I think the casting – whoever casted them in the first movie – pick the perfect people because oh, yeah. again, I don't know if, if, if the casting wasn't great, they wouldn't be able to last as many movies as they did. And for to hold the role like they did, I, mean, I don't think anyone could play tackle by the way he did. No, you know, I, yeah. Um, almost, go, mur- almost murdering his father in oh. the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just getting milk and there's a bullet hole through the milk. You know, knowing Tackleberry, he's a pretty accurate shot. I think he knew it was his dad. And he purposely like was like, dude, never get milk in my house again. Well, that's you know, it's funny. It's one thing I'm watching all these movies. This guy's a maniac with guns. I don't think he's ever shot anyone in all these movies as a cop. I don't think he shot one person and, and outside of maybe the cat in this in the first one or the second one. Let's be honest. Has anybody ever been shot in these movies? <laughs> that is true. I don't think anyone got shot. <laughs> this is like the A team. You know, they just fire bullets on the ground and guys like dive behind dumpsters. All right, and then. Then they had the meeting, and I'm pretty pissed off. They had this big meeting with everybody in there. I'm like, man, where's Hightower? Hightower is obviously like, – why didn't he get an introduction? He could have had a good one, like yeah. you know, he's lifting a car or you know, beating up somebody. He should have got his own little thing. What's up with that? Well, I, I, he took a step back this, role, uh, this movie. I don't think he was in it that much. Yeah. Um, but, but they did introduce someone else that was – I guess he wasn't in the fifth one. What's his name? The, the guy with the glasses. Fackler? Fackler. Oh, dude, he's awesome. He had, a, he had a big introduction. He came in and everybody, he was like clumsy throughout, you know, following him everywhere he went as he's walking to the police station. He's awesome. But I guess he wasn't in the fifth one. I don't remember. No, he was in one and two, definitely. That's who Proctor actually auditioned for that role in number one, lost out to him, and then they brought him back for the second one. Yeah, but I think, she was, he, I think he was in three also because his, oh, wife, okay. his wife joins the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the academy. So. Yeah. No, he's great. Every t- it's like chaos follows yeah. him. He he was like the Leslie Nielsen bit in my head. Every time he walked, it was like he would just turn a little bit and then like just every chaos would. You know what? That's just that that scene is what reminded me of Nicky Gun oh, when yeah. he walks by and the fire fireworks are going off. That was like that's Nicky Gun right there. That's he Leslie. Opens, he opens the door and then it almost hits Harris. <laughs> and then we get to meet. Honestly, dude, th- this is what I love about this movie. So these movies have formulas. I, I might get like the movies wrong, but. Say out of the six, there's three that are one way, three of the other. So three of them are, we see all the characters in the police academy. Then the end, there's a bad guy. Then the other three are the formula. You see the bad guys throughout. And dude, I love that one so much more. Because dude, these guys are perfect. You talk about casting agent. Whoever was the casting agent for this, pick the greatest people. So you have three guys, all right? One guy's a monster ogre that actually lifted a man out of his chair and used the man as a battering ram. Was that a dummy? When, when, he goes to the, when they go to the bank and they pick up the, the president of the bank, I'm sitting there with my son. He's holding the guy. That the, the, the president wasn't even moving. If, if you could watch that clip, if you YouTube, it's Stevens on YouTube, I'm telling you, it looked like it was a dummy. He's holding a dummy as the guy's speaking. No one's moving. Like It looks so ridiculous. <laughs> it really did. God, that's amazing. I don't know. I just thought the guy maybe was like so. No, no. I'm telling you, my son and I are like, I think it's a dummy. He's like, yeah, it might be. All right. So people listening, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, guy number two is, I call him the white ninja. All right. He doesn't, not only does he do, do flips, he actually is fluent in lasso. He lasso the woman's hand when she was going to hit the alarm. And the other guy really does nothing. He holds the gun and he hits on the chicks. That's all he does. The whole movie, it's always just hitting on chicks every time they're robbing. I was curious where he got that lasso from, the whip. Because he, he, the whole time he didn't have a whip. And that's a, it was a pretty big whip because it went across the room. Yeah, I don't know. He's got to have some kind of holster on the side. Yeah. Hightower figures out as soon as he gets to the bank. It seems like so quick. You know, these guys have been cops for, you know, six, seven years now. So they know. They know these guys are hired help. Because they didn't take, what, enough money? Because they left some money behind? Right. I guess that makes sense. Maybe some guys just don't have enough, big enough bags. But my favorite part, again, I love the bad guys. When they are acting like che- teenagers oh. with the guy behind the glass, <laughs> it's amazing. So you see these guys in the scene before doing flips, using guys as battering rams. Like, just like, they're, they're robbing a bank. 
And then you just see them like almost just regress into teenagers with water pistols and <laughs> dart guns. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole when they're in that, I guess in the basement or wherever they were. Yeah, yeah, their little they lair. Child, like they're like kids. They were actually like kids, hysterical. And then the bad guy takes their, their guns away, and he'll, he'll give it back later. He said. Yeah, for well, first he shoot, somehow through the glass. He, there must be a camera inside that the guy that can see himself, the man behind the the mirror, he could see himself because he shoots the dart and it hits him right in the middle of the forehead. And then he's like, "You want to know how many times that I have to tell you?" So Proctor, this is the part you you talked about before. They're in the mayor's office again, and I got to tell you guys, Lance Kinsey, who plays Proctor. He has a great improv background, and I could just see that he probably just did all these things on a whim. When he's just using, again, this is a lieutenant. He's a lieutenant in a police department. He starts doing choo-choo, starts playing with the trains on the model. See, and, and, and that was part of my notes, again, with, between Lassard, the mayor, and Proctor. Three people. What kind of testing are they doing? I mean, really, like Proctor, I don't think has any police knowledge whatsoever, and he's got the mind of an eight-year-old. Like, I mean, like, how do you become a cop? Like, how do these people become cops? You know, I mean, I, I don't know. That's just, Maybe they were that in demand. Maybe being a police officer in 19, you know, in the mid eighties was, was nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> Probably. They weren't even like doing any tests. They were like, you know, come on, here's a gun. Just sign your name. And then the mayor. So that, so they pick up the, sh- who would ever pick up somebody else's thing like that? But they, Oh, mayor Harris. Oh, you're all oh, the wonderful ship. And he's like, it took me a year to a year. This mayor is a child too. He's building ships for a whole year. In that time, he could be working on his vocabulary so he remembers these words. Then the ship breaks. If you walked in a room with all those uh, models, that mean, would you touch any of them? No. Like, I mean, I wouldn't even go near them. I wouldn't want to breathe near them, let alone, and he's picking up, like, you know, holding it. Like, you knew that doesn't happen. <laughs> is there any boss? You know, we've worked for a bunch of places. You ever go to a boss's office and they had, they had that in so many movies? Like, just think of, of Luke who's talking. Yep. You know, his office had all that ridiculous. What the hell? What's going on? How much are these people making? And they could put like, hey, you know, I was going to have, I remember his office was like African art and then he was changing it into like Southwest art. It's like, dude, how much are you making? Well, not only that, he's obviously doing those models in the office because if they're going to break when he's just holding it, how is he going to ship it there? So what, how much time does he have to do how many of those models that he's doing in the office? Yeah, I know. And you just said ship it. Yeah. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I know. So that's what he's doing during his day. He's not being a mayor or his mayor duties. You know, he's just working on that. God. And then we get another great Harris and Proctor scene. This, this was one of my favorite ones. Oh, dude. Um, it, it, was, it was a start. And then what, when he started squeegeeing the window, <laughs> I was dying. I thought, I thought I was laughing. That was very funny. <laughs> and the whole tip that Nick got was that there was like, it was mob it was like mobs and i don't know if it was like a hit or like cocaine or shipment or something but yeah and the worst thing is they wave to the guy so obviously they can see them and <laughs> yeah but <laughs> you no know, who the hell would like be like hey the window washer is using a stethoscope again <laughs> that's like, what i was gonna say <laughs> and it, does that work uh, you know what? Apparently it does. I mean, if you're if you're a captain, that's you know th- those are the kind of uh, equipment you're gonna use. Yeah. No, but when he's squeegeeing and he's like, "Would you stop that?" <laughs> that, that was great. Oh, dude, that but that part did give me anxiety. When they whenever watch a movie and they do that camera angle, like the looking down. Oh yeah. Like, oh, dude. But again, you know, again, that shows you Proctor's mentality. Like he takes everything for face value. So he's up there. He's a window washer. Well, he's going to be a window washer. He's going to do, you know, he's going to do everything that's face value. And that's what's so innocent about him. And, and if you watch all the movies, he's literally, you tell him one thing, he, he can't, can't lie. That's why when the cop said, how long have you been here? He has to tell the truth. Yeah. Like he really has the mind of like a little kid who has to tell the truth and do whatever's being told. You know, there's yeah. no deterring away from it. I know. I know they do a bunch of cutaways here, but to finish that scene when he's, he, uh, he's hanging off, and then I love when they transition into the office and they're playing the recording of it. Of him yelling and screaming. <laughs> yeah. This happened before, but Lassard and Fackler, they <laughs> head into a real CD establishment. It was where Lassard used to, it was his old boys club, yep. I think it was. And I don't know, why were they even going there? 
just doing like a, well, I think they wanted to show mug shots of like trying to see if anyone knew of any oh, of the, yeah, the, the yeah, gang yeah. members. But I love as soon as they walked in, you see all these weapons being dropped on the on the bar of all the, all the people where you see brass knuckles and all these like crazy weapons. Yeah, then he's challenged the pool and it remind me of the scene <laughs> with Uncle Phil. Oh um, yeah, Fresh Prince and get me Lucille. But yeah, and then Lassard, of course. And the guy that Lassard was going to play in pool, I can't remember his name right now off the top of my head, but that was the guy I was going to interview. Oh, really? I had an interview playing with that guy. He had some uh, health concerns, so I hope he's feeling better and we can interview him because he's been in a ton of movies. That's awesome. Yeah, and then he gets hustled by Minnesota Fats. That <laughs> Lassard's like a pool hustler. But, but you know what, though? It was, but it was innocent hustling. Like yeah. he goes, oh, you want to play pool? And he was like, yeah, sure, let's play pool. Like he, you know, again, he he's got the mind of an eight year old too. And he goes there and goes, all right, let's play. And like that game was to him was like, all right, I, I did a great game today. Like he wasn't like trying to hustle the guy. He was yeah. like, yes, yeah, I find. Meanwhile, uh, Fackler's over there, just <laughs> oh, knocked yeah. out three guys <laughs> on one shot. <laughs> I wonder how many people got injured doing those scenes because he had to like perfectly like put the pool cue behind him, and then he turns, he knocks the one guy out. Yeah. Shoots it, shoots the ball off the table. The guy's sleeping in the chair. Man, Fackler, I wonder how many people he injured during. Just think of him as a police officer. How many lawsuits do they have pending? Yeah, the people in the office when they see him walk through, they like just run. There was one guy, and, and when he was walking in the office, he dove over the, the the desk like so ridiculous. Like it's like they know he's coming. He's like a atomic bomb. You know, he just gets out of his way. Even the prostitute that was getting booked. <laughs> And I don't know if it was the first time or the second time he walks through. She was like, she knew. So she's yeah. probably been picked up probably once, twice, or ten times. And she she like even like ran out of the way so he wouldn't do anything to her. <laughs> and then they sent hooks and high tower to the guys rapping. Like, come on. You know who that rapper was? No. Melly, that was Melly Mel. Melly Mel. I, I think he's from Grandmaster Flesh and Melly Mel. Like the oh, okay. The, yeah, so he was an old school rapper. Um, so yeah, I I, I, I recognize the voice. He sounded like Ice T a little bit. Yeah, and so I, you know, but obviously he was too young. So I'm looking, I looked it up, and it was Melly Mel. So yeah, I just was like just a little bit racist, you know, sending the. I think it'd be funny to put send. They would have sent Fackler, 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 and Tackleberry. Now we're and Tackleberry rapping back. Hooks rapping back was pretty cool, but dude, if it was like a top that scene. Oh, yeah. But with Tackleberry? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Okay, so imagine. Okay, so then, so that means that Hightower and Hooks would go to the other bar. You know, the redneck, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it would have been rough on both ends. So yeah, that is true. had no choice. Uh, I, I wrote this down, but uh, was, were they using, was Hooks using a blue cell phone or blue, like a, uh, it wasn't a cell phone. It was like a portable phone, but it was like the size of her head. <laughs> she was like, uh, I guess she was climbing the telephone pole. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, what they were doing is like that thing they do in movies is when the people, you've seen it like so many, like, it's like a cliche. They have those big phones and they can hook into the line and then they can like use it like a regular phone. I know. It was like obnoxiously big. <laughs> it was. It was really good. <laughs> Man, I love, I love this scene. This is like my favorite scene in the movie. They know they're going to transport the diamond. They have everybody set up in all different locations. And the diamond is in the back of the armored car with Harris and Proctor in the back of the car. How could the, di- how could the diamond get stolen? <laughs> why, why that diamond? I forgot how much they said it was worth. It's a small area. <laughs> why are they staring out the window? And, and why would you put Proctor and Harris? Who it really Harris has not solved anything. He's been more of a hassle than anything else. You're going to put them like right with the diamond. I know. I mean, you know, and, and and really, like, again, it, it, Harris, how did he become captain? Because he has, he is, he is dumber than Proctor. He really is. And they don't hear, they don't hear a laser going through the floor of the, the truck, you know, cutting the, cutting the truck hole. Maybe it was a silent laser. But to go back to why Cap, he's a captain, look at everyone else. Who else would have a job out of all those people? You know, Jones. Jones probably couldn't get through the interview. He, beep, 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 beep. You know what? The more you think about it, he's a child too. He's an eight-year-old. Child. He's always making oh, yeah. like fart noises or whatever. Like you know, like I think Tackleberry probably the most military. But I, how, can you feel safe with him? <laughs> it's, you know, no, not really. Because yeah, there's a grenade that ends up blowing up Harris's car in a little bit. You know, what, yes. really? probably probably Callahan. 
I would put she seems to be the most serious. Yeah, but she sleeps with all the people. Oh, is that frowned upon? It is because then the people could feel like, hey, the only way I'm going to make it to cap that, you know, to to get a raise or anything, I got to sleep with my boss, and that's not that's not right. Okay, you're right. It's not right. <laughs> but yeah, and then again, he's in the back. The lasers cut through. They steal the diamond. They turn around finally, and uh, it's gone. The diamond's gone. Harris has to do a Flintstones uh, run on the street oh, while the car's yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like he's running the same speed as the truck you know and then his his, his shoes are on fire almost like they're yes. smoking when, he, when they stop yeah that that goes back to like you said the leslie the more physical comedy in this movie yes it's like that naked gun yeah but so when they get back okay just just think of everything we just talked about he screwed up so much so many times the first robbery happened right behind him this one happened right in front of him how can he be chewing people out? He chews out Nick. Nick was in the front just driving. And he was in the back two feet away. He, he had to look out the window. But that's what he does. See, in all the movies, he's always blamed someone else for what was going on. And no one thinks twice about it. They, they all, in all the movies, all the, the, the commanders that are ahead of him, they know he's a kiss ass. But he somehow is able to throw everybody else under the bus. But how does um, the people above him? It's crazy. Wouldn't they? Wh- where are the police reports? There has to be some report <laughs> that they look at. And it's like, wait, so Harris, well, you're just chewing at Nick, but it says here you were next to it. Yeah, I know. And, you know, I mean, speaking of Nick, you know, I guess he's the guy that replaces Mahoney. You know, he's the prankster. He's the, but like, you know, I, to me, he's a little like, if, if it's a weaker point in the movie, I think it's Nick. You know, yeah, well, it's hard to – anytime you're replacing someone, I know it's not like they use the same name or anything, but when you're, like, filling in for a character, it's no, – like, no, And I agree. Uh, you, know, so I just, you know what it is? Like, the, the jokes that they're doing are so, like, weaker compared to what Mahoney used to do. Oh, I know. You know, you know knocking the chair out or whatever. Like, you know, they're, they're funny, but, I mean, like, the, the tricks in the earlier ones, I mean, those pranks are awesome. Like, yeah. You know, so, you know, but that was that, that's what I'm missing. I'm like missing the good pranks they used to do on Harris. Yeah, well, no, they had a good one. They broke the chair earlier to set up the prank for later. So they he he taps the chair with his cane. It falls apart, so he sits in the other chair, glued to his ass. He sits right in crazy glue. And then he and, has to run around the office. And 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 what is that cane that he that he's constantly tapping people? You know, he's had it in every yeah. movie. I mean, he, have you ever seen a cop with a cane like that? No. <laughs> Should he be on the force? Should he be on active duty with an injury like that? Maybe that's back <laughs> issues. Jeez. And, and then again, again, like I told you, I love the formula of this movie. We get police academy, then the robbers. And when they do that smash and grab again, the one guy who, I don't know if you remember, he's the, he's the dickhead, uh, not stepdad, but adoptive dad in uh, Child's Play 2. I don't remember. Yeah. He takes a tumble down the stairs. <laughs> Chucky like grabs his leg in the basement. But so he starts hitting on the girl and uh, yeah, dude, the big guy, dude, he starts like freaking smashing, grabbing, taking all the diamonds. And then the, again, before we talked about the cowboy ninja, now he's a cowboy ninja dynamite guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he produces dynamite. He puts in the owner of the jewelry store's, pocket and then he just throws it <laughs> and it blows up the vault is now is this where they gave harris the money the, the b- no this is where harris gets in the way again okay so they knew nick knew because of the line right, 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 right. the bus line where it was going to be like where exactly where the crimes were going to happen they have right. it all staked out they had him good harris gets in between so again, go back. He's right in front of him, one crime, right behind him, one crime. This one, he gets in the middle of it. So he's all like around all the issues that are going on with him. Well, he's trying to be the first one because he wants to make the big arrest. You know, he, he wants to be the guy. He wants to be promoted. He's been, he's been trying to get promoted since Police Academy 1. You know, and he's obviously six, you know, six movies later, he's still the Captain Harris. You know, so, yeah. but he, so he's trying to be the first everywhere, but he's botching everything up. And like that one, he should lose his job. He got in the middle. So he was basically in the, in the middle of the robbers and Nick and Hightower, like all set up there. Yep. So he's like in the way of them shooting. Those guys just shoot up. They shoot down the the, uh, the banner, covers the car. Then the robbers drive past, shoot the tires out. 
So, so that banner is what was in the way of the robbers leaving. I know. <laughs> Again, we said it before. They don't shoot people in this movie. That's they true. shoot tires. <laughs> <laughs> so then they find the stolen jewelry in Lassard's office. So Lassard is a dirty bastard. You remember his line, though? What he says? No. He goes, I'm surprised it was you or something like that. And he goes, I'm surprised myself. Because like, he had no clue what was going on. <laughs> And then they're all sitting there. You know what's funny? It's almost like just because he did that, his whole team's dismissed. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't happen in a police department. If like, you know, a captain or, you know, they, they do something wrong, it's not like everyone else like loses their job from it. So they're sitting in the office just like, you know, they're sitting there just like, oh, man, what are we going to do like in the break room? And then that's when Fackler, <laughs> when, the ta- when Hightower hits the table, right? Yep. <laughs> Freaking grenade. Taco Berry, when he's nervous, other people, you know, bite their fingernails, <laughs> maybe like pick their teeth or their lip. No, he like plays with a grenade, a live grenade. Well, in, in, the, in the other ones, he played with a gun. He was like rolling the barrel. Like he's always, <laughs> he's, he always has something in his hands that, that could kill someone. Yeah. And again, never does. That <laughs> grenade flies out of the window. Dude, it's a police parking There's a lot of people that work there. Now one person's close by. <laughs> And it happens to hit so, uh, what, Harrison's car? Yeah. <laughs> so so his, his car happened to be the one right there. I know. I would think in, in these movies, you know, all these things do happen. It's like watching those superhero movies like Avengers and all those. Like buildings blow up and get expl- – they never talk about people dying. <laughs> like in these movies, somebody had to die. Yeah. Like when we see the bullets like getting shot and nobody gets hit, boy, that bullet's ended up somewhere. <laughs> You know what? Think about think again. Go back to the. I don't think anyone's died in any of the series because there was a. I forget which might have been two. They had a, like a shootout in a glass like a uh, store of, of selling. Like, oh, the lamp store. Lamp store. Yeah. And they're shooting. And now it wasn't a big store, and they're shooting at each other. Now one person gets hit. You know. So uh, I think it's just in the script. No one can die. We can shoot anywhere we want to go, but no one's gonna die. Yeah. So then they're all like, "Hey, let's get together. Let's rally. Let's make sure we clear Lassard's name. He would do it for us." And now we have to talk about this. The computers. Honestly, I, you were young then. I had a computer like that growing up. I had a Commodore 64. And I don't remember that you were able to do anything like that. <laughs> Put an image in, like, pew, 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 just typing and the image comes up and it lays on the other. That's not real. Well, I, again, not to go back in the other movies, they had the same kind of computer. And the, the two guys that were spying for Harris, they were, you, they were controlling yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like the car, the police car that was going around. So they they apparently their computers could do anything. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. No, they, have no, all, they, have, they have those futuristic high-tech equipment that the CIA uses for all these eight-year-olds. Yeah, in 1980. It's just, oh, yeah, no. So the computer says access denied. And what does Hightower do? He pulls a Fonz move. He hits the screen with his fist, and then the password. That's not how passwords work. I'm going to try the next time my laptops are working. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's phone sitting there at work you hit the button and it's just locked and you're like siri punch it and then it just turns right on all right back to the robbers this is probably my favorite the, well they're all really good this is the best they're like sitting there they're not like children they're really you know they're acting like the kids that were in trouble last night they're all just sitting there really quiet to themselves they're like hey boss we got your present <laughs> So they slide him a cigar. He's like, ooh, a Cuban. And then he, start, then he, he lights it. Poof, explosion. An explode, exploding cigar. And his hat jumps up in the air. Yes. Just, just, like in the old cartoons. Like a hat like explodes and his hat flies up and flies back down. <laughs> and, then, and then right after that is when the blackout happens. Yep. Well, this starts everything else. This this starts like the the tort, you know, the the tort to the ending of, of what they're trying to do. Oh yeah, so blackout happens, chaos ensues, and Nick goes to a comedy club with Jones. <laughs> this I th- this was amazing. I you know oh, I yeah. love I love great impressions, but I've never seen anyone do anything like he did with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, that, that was awesome. It really was. Because not only did he sound like Jimi Hendrix when he was talking, but he made the noise of the the guitar. Then the noise of the amp after the guitar. Like, I mean, he does, like, the whole skit. Yeah. No, he is the best ever. He really is. Like, there's no 
There's no one even close. No. Like no. what he can do. But the thing that I love is there's chaos going on. There's a blackout. They're like, hey, let's calm down these 40 people in a comedy club. <laughs> you know, comedy clubs don't have a lot of people. There might be an office building or, I don't know, like a, like a church or, you know, pe- you know, where there's more people. No, no, we're just going to hang out with these people that are drunk just to make sure they're okay. Meanwhile, they're probably more okay than anyone else that's you know out know. there. They're drinking. They've been laughing the whole night. So it's a blackout. Who cares? They're still drinking and have a good time. Like those are people who don't need help. And wait, where was the comedian? The comedian didn't show up yet. <laughs> Couldn't he have gone on stage? Like that was his job. Like if the blackout didn't happen, he was the one that was going to have to make those people laugh. So he has to follow that act. He might as well just pack up and go home. <laughs> Rip up that check that they gave him. You can't follow up, Jones. No, not at all. Kellyanne and Hooks. They see a guy, a couple of guys in the alley, and they're like, "Hey, look at these women! They're not going to do anything." They <laughs> count and beats the crap out of him doing ninja stuff. You know, you know, I looked at her in the, in this movie. She's super skinny, like her arm. Like they make her such a like a beast. She's just probably just tall, but like yeah. she's skinny. Like she's a very like she comes across bigger than she is. I guess because of her boobs. Yeah. But like, yeah, but like, yeah. She beats the crap out of him. And I feel like right, right like this, just like any other blackout that happens, like people take advantage of it. All those people are taking the TVs and then the high tower walks over and like immediately they start like putting the TVs. Right well, they had, they had a line. They had like a whole line yeah. of like passing the TVs. Around An assembly and all, line. Yeah, yeah. And, they don't, and then all of a sudden you see the last guy before he puts in a truck, pass it back the other way. You don't know why until you yeah. realize it's high tower. You're like, oh shit, high tower is here. Yeah, not enough high tower in this movie. Yeah, not not at all. Because in all the other movies, he really plays like an integral part. Well, I, you know, he had, I mean, he had the big fight scene. He did have it with the big the big guy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so I mean, that was just like you know, you knew that was gonna come. Now there was another scene I wrote down, and I don't remember. It was a gas scene. Like it, it was. Um... That's when Nick finds out where the bad guy is. He found out where their lair was, and he found the secret way to get into the lair. So, yeah, when he's in that room, yeah, I don't know why he starts spraying that. But is it, you see it right now? You're watching it? No, I'm not watching that, but I just okay. remembered it. So, and, and again, there's someone picks up a bottle. Like, a, like a, I'm spraying something. I'm like, what are they spraying for? Like I, 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 mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why he would be spraying something else, unless it was something that could, like, counteract it. No, it was, and I don't even know. I don't even remember who sprayed it. Yeah, the room. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. So, Nick's standing there in the room with a gun. The behind the, behind the glass is... Just smoke. There's nothing behind it. Right. And the gas just starts pouring out from the bottom. Okay. So let's see. And then he's like laughing it off, like thinking it's not real, which I don't know why you wouldn't think it was right. real. It's green gas, you know, not So green. this is the gas when they're, when they're close to catching the bad guy, right? Yeah. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, so he's like locked in the room. I don't know. What do you – oh, <laughs> He, he grabs air freshener. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, yeah, I don't, why would he think air freshener is doing to help him out? That's like a long way to get there, but that's I, yeah. I wrote it down because I'm trying to figure it out. It makes no sense. And he, he only sprayed it for like two seconds, and then he put it down. Yeah, what the hell would he have – What was that makes no sense. Oh, dude, so Taco Berry, when, when Taco Berry meets up with everyone, this is, this is really cool. This is like – I thought like – so for some reason, if this is the last movie of the series, I know they made the other one, but this essentially is the last movie with you know, the f- Most full, full core, cat, core right. class, really. And I thought it was a perfect three people they had to battle those bad guys. You know, 100%. you had H- Hightower, you know, versus the big ogre guy, which, dude, that guy stood up pretty, yeah. pretty much next to him. Yeah. You had Jones fighting the karate, you know, the cowboy karate uh, ninja dynamite guy and then you had tackleberry dude tackleberry scene is so great so tackleberry is like yeah i'll be right down he has he beats him on his police motorcycle again he's in full police garb he goes give me a second i'll be right down <laughs> they're climbing down how did he change he maybe he's like superman he changes into the camo <laughs> in no time and he's carrying like, a, a massive machine gun oh my god yeah <laughs> Again, a machine gun that has never shot a person. Yeah, he can he can write uh, have a good day in uh, writing. You know, he's that that good aim, but he can that was really shot. impressive. That was. I did like that little like go back. I thought all of them was pretty good. The fight no, the, scene the, between the High Tower and the Ogre. Oh, but the Jones scene uh, I, when after the whole karate thing that you know he's used now for three movies for the kung fu movies, but then he does the robot at the end. Yeah, he, like quick thinking, he's down. He's like, all right, how am I gonna get out of this? He puts like a little pl- a metal 
a shield on his stomach and, you know, he starts in the robot. And Tackleberry shoots, have a nice day. The guy's running away. Perfect opportunity to mow this guy down yeah. with it. You know, no, you know what he's going to do? He's going to take out, what would, that, what would that even be called? Well, well, I actually have that game in my backyard. It's ladder ball. When you have yeah. that. <laughs> so. It is ladder ball. I forget the name <laughs> of the thing. It's almost like, it starts with a B. I remember it from a video. I remember from Jurassic Park, the Super Nintendo game. It like started a with a B. Yeah. Like a Baleo or I don't know. Yeah, no, it sounds something like that. But yeah, he hits the guy in the legs, boom, falls down. <laughs> oh my God. So they, they okay. have all the guys caught. They're all next to the fence, all right? So then, oh my God, we still got to make sure that we catch the bad guy that ran away. Dude, the, the stuntman that is in, I know. it looks nothing like him. It looks nothing like him at oh, all. You're talking, talking about the Nick one? Yeah, when Nick uh, is in there, in that, in it, the- it looks nothing like him. <laughs> they, like, they keep going and cut, cut, and like you can just see like it's a bad wig. It, t- or and at times it might have been a dummy. I'm telling you, I yeah. when when you, when you get a chance, go back to that first heist. And when I he, will. When he picks up the president, I'm telling you, it was a dummy. So yeah, it was horrible. The stunt guy looked nothing like him at all. Like they almost like they didn't even try. They're like, let's just throw someone on there. Who's Give willing the to go on there when we're driving? That's really what it is. <laughs> the stunt man called in sick that day. <laughs> I, I love that they had a cameo because it's like a big time, I guess, when monster trucks and all that stuff were big. They had a grave digger. That was the monster truck that was in there just, again, running over people's cars. Now one civilian dead. Well, out of curiosity, where do you find a monster truck that's available like that? I mean, you know, because I've never seen one outside of at Madison Square Garden or whoever, you know, wherever they have the shows. Like, where do you find a monster truck on the street in, in the city streets? Oh, they're, they're, I guess they're highly popular, you know, 1989. <laughs> they're just as part. It's like, it goes like, uh, you know, Dodge, Ford, Mustang, then monster truck. All the, all the, all the guys want to have monster trucks nowadays. And then, oh my God. And then they get the opportunity to run over Harris and Proctor and nothing happens to him. And who get in the way again to try, like they're almost sabotage everything again. Right now. And then how about the, uh, was it, was it the flip at the end at the monster truck when he, when he, was it Nick that flips out of the truck? He does yeah. like, when he gets out of the truck, he does like a, like a triple lending, you know, uh, flip out of the truck. Uh, come on. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. That was so bad. <laughs> I wonder if they use like a female like actress for that. Maybe, uh, what was her name? It was right around that time. The one that Mary, was on the Mary, Lou, Mary Lou Ren. Yes. He does a flip. Oh my god! Like I mean, really, that like that flip was not necessary at all. I mean, like I mean, the movie's silly, but like that was just like you know what? How can we make this over the top, like really over the top at the end? Yeah, like, that we gotta end bad. with a bang. Let's just have him come out and do like a a straight legged triple leading flip that would get a ten in Olympics. Let's do that right here. Why couldn't he like jumped up, hung yeah. on it, right? Let go, land in the truck. <laughs> no, he had to do all these dangerous flips. That so when Harrison, you know, Proctor, I have no car. But if they got to get in on it. They got to make sure they steal a bus. Now, what do you think? Do you think when they were thinking about the movie Speed, they were like, this is what I want. A runaway bus. It's going to be going down the street. It's going to drive over people. And Proctor starts picking up people. Well, that, again, that goes with Proctor takes everything for face value. He's, you know, he's, he, he, he's, he's a child that, you know, oh, we're in a bus. I got to take affairs now. Like, I got I to gotta do the right thing. Like, he's... That I was laughing at that scene also. The minute he stopped for the first time, you see Harris like rolling his eyes. Like Prop is picking up Ferris. They're doing a chase and he's gotta stop. Yeah. He has such a simple mind. It's great. He did he played that role so great. You almost would say he is Kramer ish or is Kramer Proctor ish. You know what? I Kramer never did, thought of that. Kramer yeah. did the same thing. You know what? I would say Proctor has a very much has is very much a Kramer type character. Yeah. You know what? You interview uh, Rich, Michael Richards, and you can ask him if he you know, based his character on Proctor. I could. He was. Well, he's got to find a sequel that he was in, and then they catch him. They finally catch him. They think it's. I don't know. I don't remember what was the other guy's job. See, there's Commandant, the other white guy. He what was the, his job? You know what? I don't know. He was the he was the head guy. So he's higher than a Commandant, obviously. All right, we don't have to look it up. Whoever's higher than a Commandant. <laughs> And you're like, oh, man, he did it. And then we see him walk in the room. So how can he be sitting in the chair and walk in the room? So we have the old double. I kind of wish they did do the old double uh, 
hey, who are you? And they stand next to each other in movies. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, which one should I shoot? Like, and they do, I think they do that in like even a Bond movie. They, they don't they, know which one to shoot. Or Scooby, uh, Scooby-Doo. I, yeah. I look at it as Scooby-Doo, but he, he's a chief. He's a chief. So chief, yeah. So, and you know, right off the bat, you can see when he's sitting there, he looks like there's something off with him. Yeah, like yeah. When he's sitting there, you know. Um, but yeah, they do the little Scooby-Doo, which one is which, you know. Who, who did you, who do you think it was? Did you know it right away? No, you know, it's in when I, I remember seeing this movie the first time. The first time I saw it, I thought first I thought Lassard might have been part of that, but then I thought it could have been. Uh, actually, my son thought it was um, Fackler. Fackler. Well, but just because Fackler was, you know, he came in new, you know, yeah. he was, you know, so he's, he's like, I bet you, it's fat, you know, so. Um, but I thought it was Lassard. I thought he was like playing everybody after a while, and he's like, I can't do this anymore, kind of thing. So I thought it was him. You know, be really wild. And again, they probably maybe could have done it. Who would have cared? It's not like it ruins the other movie. They're comedy movies. It's not like this is yeah. like a serious like drama. And you probably could have got him because he was only going to be in you know, 10 seconds of the movie. Mahoney. Mahoney. Or- Mahoney. Yeah. yeah. yeah that would like have been awesome. Mahoney just be like, hey, you know, times are rough. I'm not a cop anymore. Did they ever say where – so you said Mahoney was in four, but he was never in five. I don't know if he was at five, so I don't know what they mentioned. I don't think he was. I don't think he was, but I wonder if they did like a little yeah. thing like they do in the beginning of the movie. It's like, hey, is Mah- Mahoney coming to Miami? It's like, oh, no, he got a big job in L.A. or New York. Well, you know? it's probably just around the time he was doing Cocoon and all his other movies, short circuit. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, I can't do Police Academy anymore, you know. Yeah. But you know what? You're right. If it was either Mahoney or even Zed, I think I'd have been hysterical every Bobcat at the end. <laughs> <laughs> or Sweet Chuck. You know what? That would have been classic because, yeah. you know, he's been picked on all these movies that he was in, that he's the one that was the mastermind behind everything. It was Sweet Chuck. That would have been classic. That would have been, been great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty much the end of the movie. So the, la- the last scene, though, I had to write down. That oh, okay. What do we have? When, he- when Harris was floating with the balloons. <laughs> yes. I- it looks so ridiculous. Like, I, I- like I- they're like, oh, I- I don't know. It, it was like, I feel like a lot of the stuff they really like, you know what? They, they didn't care what they were putting into it or the money. Like, let just make it as ridiculous as possible. Yeah. Floating away in these balloons and just the special effects look so ridiculous. I know. Like, but yeah, I had to mention that. So yeah. Listen, it, it holds water. I saw it when I was younger. Um, I enjoyed watching it again now. It's not my favorite. Um, if I have to choose out of all of them, I think the first one is the best one. Yeah. Um, but I think you know what? I think this one was great. I mean, it, it was still entertaining and I would totally recommend it. If you enjoy the other ones, knowing that you're going into a, you know, a, a slapstick silly movie, you're going to like it. Yeah. There's no franchise comedy series that makes it this far and still is that good. You know, the other ones that even started off real hot. And even like when they tried to make three, like hangover three was terrible. Horrible. I mean, maybe naked gun. I mean, the three naked guns, but you know what? There's only three of them. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if you could have gone more. And, you know, I think th- to prove your point, what you said, like, you know, not, not too many franchises because you keep the core people there. I don't know too many people have seen the seventh one or the, the Moscow, Mission of Moscow. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. Um, I, I think more, most people have not seen that one out of the other ones. And, and why? Because the core of the people are not there. Yeah, yeah. You only have three people coming back. So that just tells you something. When you have a good cast that can stick it out, it can last. Yeah. And like you said, the perfect casting. So like when you cast this movie – you said the perfect group of people that weren't too famous, not that they were not famous, but right. they were famous from these films and they kept coming back. And like when I was talking to Lance Kinsey, who played Par- Proctor, he said it was like a formula every year we shot. No, we started shooting in October, November and the movies were done in January. The filming that came out on spring break every year, and every year they opened up as the number one comedy. So they had this perfect formula that worked. And even the fact, even though the seventh movie wasn't as good, you know, I, I, I've never seen it. Just the fact that they were able to make one that did have some of the core people. You have the American Pie series, you know, yep. they, they, they had to go into like all these spinoffs and all these different movies that yep. just did work. But so how could this movie had, you know, could have been better? I mean, I'm going to state the obvious. I would bring Mahoney and Zed. I mean, to me, they they were the core, a big part of the core of the first one. Even forget, forget even Bobcat. He was good. He came as a co-star, but Mahoney, he was the guy that ran. You know, the all all the characters looked up to. He was the leader of their group. He was the biggest wise guy, the womanizer, the you know, the prankster. And to me, he made the other movies. You know, um, I think that would be the biggest part um, if you could have done that. Um, I don't know. What do you think? 
No, I no, I agree. I ha- again, I love this movie. I thought it was so great. I love that formula. Those three robbers are great. But yeah, if, if Mahomie could have been in it, even in like a cameo role, even he had like a little part. Did you just call him Mahomie? Mahomie. He's my home. <laughs> he, he's my homie. <laughs> but even like we said, I think even if you say he, they couldn't get him, they couldn't get Bobcat because Bobcat was getting really big at this point. So yep. he was doing a lot of his movies, like the horse yep. movie, right? Like Hot to Trot. Hot to Trot. Probably right around this time. Yeah, he was doing a stand up, and then he got a little while for a little while in the nineties. But if they would have Sweet Chuck been the mastermind, that could have really worked. But that would have been great. Showed you again that the formula they had, they haven't. They they redo so many of these series. You know, in Hollywood, they remake a lot of these movies. They have not tried to remake Police Academy because I don't think they would be able to find the same characters and and make it work. I think it. You know, I, I don't think it would work, and I think that's why Hollywood hasn't done it. Yeah, it's too hard to nail that many main characters. Like, if it's a movie like, again, I don't want to put this in the realm, into the universe because they might redo it. But say like Twins, you know, there's a formula for that. You know, you have who is the really big strong guy action star out nowadays. Pair him with like an oddball short guy. You know, they could do that right now, and it, you know, honestly, it might work. But this to land all these people, you'd right. have to get a, a retired football player that's a monster. You'd have to get an up and coming funny guy that is going to be around for a few movies because you want to, you couldn't just do a one off to tell the story and to give all these characters. And that's what I love about these movies too. So all these people that obviously, you know, Mahoney was a star. Gutenberg was a star, but when you watch these movies, they all had equal parts. Like if you yep. did runtime, if you and I sat here with stopwatch, yep. each actor, it's almost like that equal screen time. Hightower a little bit less than this movie because maybe he had something going on, but it was just like, dude, everybody had an equal share. So I'm sure they had such a great time. Well, I think also, and you know, you mentioned twins, you know, and can they do it again? Yeah. You get Kevin Hart and the rock. They can do twins easily. You know, for the most part, a lot of them were unknown actors and they yeah. made the character their own. Like, oh, they made yeah. their own. So if you had someone else like now being a tackleberry for like the reboot of police Academy, they're going to be so over the top that it's not going to be tackleberry. It's going to be stupid. Like it won't yeah. be. Like these guys made their character. They, they they molded their own characters, and that's what made the the, the movie so good. Yeah, it would be like it would it would turn into more of like a character of a character. Yeah, exactly. it'd be like over the top. Yep. Yep. But yeah, I don't think this movie needs any fixing alone. No. Like you said, it holds up. This movie was awesome. It if was. you're listening, check it out. And then next week, our episode is the full interview with Lance Kinsey. He is an amazing. He's funny. He has a great stories. He tells about who else interviewed for the role too. It's not, it'll be the last person that you think of, which is so funny. And uh, no, he's great. So make sure you check out that. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any sequels. Recommend some sequels to us. We already have some that are recommended that are on the list uh, from people that listen to us, which is so cool. Follow us on Twitter at sequels only. And that's it. Good night. Good night.